everyone and welcome to thorough newspaper analysis which is presented to you by law seeko so today we'll be discussing one article only which is there from the hindu the title of this article is farm laws their constitutional validity and hope so as we know that recently the supreme court has uh, held the implementation of these uh, three four farm laws so on what grounds uh, has it uh, actually held these uh, the constitutional um, the, the validity on this the question has been there and uh, what are the other provisions relating to the passing of bill in the parliament have been discussed in this article and secondly we have the news in flash column for our prelims exam so if you're also preparing for judicial services examination you can have a look at the lord of the courses which is the judiciary test prep course coming from law seeko so the link to this course is available in the description box below and from the landing page you can also download free study material for your own preparation also we are excelling into courses like for clat all india bar exam sebi etc you can have a look at them too so this is the multiple choice question from yesterday's discussion which of the following countries is not a member of sarc which is the south Asso south asian association for regional cooperation so your options are bangladesh nepal afghanistan or malaysia you can write down your answer in the comment section below so this is the descriptive question for the day discuss the procedure for passing of a bill in the parliament so you can you have to write down the enumerate the entire procedure for passing of a bill and for that we'll mean an ordinary bill so with this let's start the discussion for today's article uh, which says that the supreme court recently stayed the operation of the farm laws and ordered setting up of a committee of experts to negotiate with the farmers now as we know that the uh, three farm laws have been currently they have their uh, implementation has been stayed by the supreme court and for this purpose the supreme court uh, for you know the for dwelling and for the, for getting into this entire discussion the supreme court court has ordered to set up a committee of experts to negotiate with the farmers but the very concern of the concern over here is that the farmers are they are not demanding anything but the laws to be repealed completely and also the other thing that we need to consider is that the committee the expert committee which we are talking about in here it does not really compromise of completely impartial or neutral experts rather the people who are now we'll see these are the four members who are there for the expert committee are there some in some or the other way they are themselves in support of the laws of the farm laws so that is why at least it should, should it should have been made sure that the members of the committee have a neutral and they have a broad view point towards the farm laws so these are the four people uh, who have been uh, who are the members in the this expert committee bhupinder singh man ashok gulati anil ghanavat and pramod joshi so you can have a look uh, as to their portfolios now let's understand about the constitutionality of the laws so basically why at all the constitution the constitutionality of these three farm laws can be questioned in the supreme court is that the voting in rajya sabha was not done in accordance with the rules of the house now what happened was that the deputy chairman did not order the recording of votes that is through the division by members when demanded so the general rule says that even if there is one person or the one member of the house that demands that the votes be divided and it should be noted down properly then the deputy chairman and otherwise the chairman but in this case it was the deputy chairman who was doing this did not order the recording of the votes even <coughs> by the members when demanded then there was this violation of article 100 of the constitution so basically article 100 of the constitution as it re reads over here it requires all questions in the house to be determined by the recording of votes of members present and voting but basically this was done through only voice vote and thus the totality in totality the members present and voting were not noted down in a proper uh, you know in a recorded manner they were not recorded and this was a clear violation of article 100 of the constitution and also the constitution doesn't recognize voice vote and to determine majority so basically it has to be a recorded a formal recording of the votes of the members present and voting and the indian constitution it is devised basically for the sake of convenience that in the constitution of india there is uh, you know it is not allowed to have actually only and only the voice vote so yes initially we have the voice vote but then they are formally recorded as well but here it was not done so now let's understand to the uh, very next important question that can the judiciary intervene 
Article 122 of the Constitution protects the proceedings of the House from judicial review. One another thing that one in, in the current situation, we need to see that otherwise in the general situations, Article 122 of the Constitution protects that the proceedings of the House shall not be subjected to judicial review but only when the proceedings are challenged on irregularity of procedure. But yes, if there was any kind of irregularity regarding any procedure that had to be taken up by the house, then that irregularity can be definitely challenged for the judicial review in the court of law. So violation of article 100 is not a mere procedural irregular, irregularity. And that is why it is, uh, you know, um, it is uh, definitely it can be challenged and it is a constitutional uh, aspect of it which was not followed or taken care of by the members of the Rajya Sabha and that is why the farm bills can be challenged. Now let's see that what are the options available with the court or the parliament to say. The court can strike down the whole law as the requirement of Article 107 had not been fulfilled. So Article 107 provides that subject to the provisions of Article 109 and 117 with respect to money bills and other financial bills, a bill may originate in either House of Parliament and then subject to the provisions of Article 108 and 109, a bill shall not be deemed to have been passed by the Houses of Parliament unless it has been agreed to by the both the houses either without amendment or with such amendments only as are agreed by to by both houses so that is why it can invalidate the three laws so one option is this and other it can invalidate the three laws and send them back to the houses for further proceedings in accordance with the constitution which basically can be a good chance for the parliament to rethink about these farm laws and also to negotiate in a better manner and to hold a better dialogue to include the states as well as the the farmers contentions so once the court decides the legality or constitutionality of a law the potential the, the political or and legislative aspects of the issue will have to be dealt with only by parliament now this thing is to be kept in mind so here again the parliament only will have to ponder upon the entire thing and it will have to uh, consider the political and legislative aspects of the very laws so these are the all infographics you can go through these regarding the passing of the bill as well so these are the types of bill ordinary money financial bill and also the special bills you can go through them as well with this let's see what do we have for news in flash today so firstly it is pongal today it is celebrated in south indian states to make the harvest time of rice turmeric and sugarcane and it is celebrated in four days which are called as the bhogi pongal surya pongal Matu Pongal and Kanu Pongal and the origin of this festival has been around 2000 years ago as a Dravidian harvest festival. Secondly, Ministry of Defense demands adultery laws to be stayed for military. Now, as we know that the adultery was decriminalized by the Supreme Court uh, like two, three years ago. But this uh, Ministry of Defense has demanded uh, that the Supreme Court admitted a petition by Ministry of Defense seeking to exempt armed forces personnel from the ambit of constitutional bench judgment of 2018 decriminalizing the adultery, which was Section 497 of the IPC. So basically, the arguments that the Ministry of Defense has uh, have given uh, has given uh, is you know they're very intrigued and we need to really you know get into it that the, they say that adultery amounted to an unbecoming conduct and a violation of discipline under the army act navy act and air force act which are protected under article 33 of the constitution and thus uh, a special you know a treatment can be given to these uh, military forces wherein they also say that when uh, the military uh, personnel are serving into you know uh, various uh, different uh, areas and they're they're away from their family then uh, this law being decriminalized would not give them a very good uh, you know uh, they might uh, get into a, th a thought process about their family getting into any unbecoming or unwanted activities Thirdly, Tejas LCA, which is the light combat uh, aircraft to be made in India by the HAL. So this basically is also uh, in a, a, an initiative taken up in the field of making India an Atmanirbhar Bharat as well. So the Cabinet Committee on Security cleared the largest indigenous procurement to strengthen the armed forces and tensions with China on the LAC. So basically to strengthen the armed forces and tackle with the China uh, on the LAC. So eight... Uh, Please pardon, this is 83. 83 uh, Tejas light combat aircraft uh, for rupees 48,000 crores designed by, shall be designed by the uh, Aeronautical Development uh, Agency and shall be manufactured by the HL, which is Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So please consider the number is 83 and it is 48,000 crore rupees. 
Fourthly, India uh, to become largest exporter of wheat. After rice, India is set to turn a major exporter of wheat as per the forecast by the US Department of Agriculture. So basically, it has upped Indian uh, wheat exports for 2020-21 to 1.8 million tons, which is uh, the million metric tons. So this was all for the day. We hope it was a good session for you. Thank you so much. And if in case you wish to download the PDF for today's slides, you can join a Telegram group. The link is there in the description box. Thank you so much. Thank you.